Hi, everyone. My name is, uh, yeah, Karsu. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about my story about my life, not just about music, but um, how it became that I uh, became a musician. It was not uh, my planning. So what happens is um, I, my parents are born in Turkey in the village named Karsu. They named me after the village that we, they were born. My mom uh, immigrated to uh, Amsterdam when she was eight years old, and my father a little bit later when he was 20 years old. So I am born and raised in Amsterdam, and I had a really happy childhood together, uh, together also with my sister. And I was so fortunate that my parents gave me every opportunity that uh, was possible. So we went to a museum, we did cultural things, uh, I was uh, in swimming. But when I was seven years old, I watched television, I saw a guy with long hair playing the piano. That's when, when I said, all right, this is what I want. I want to play the piano. My mom and dad uh, had saved up 5,000 uh, euros to buy themselves a car. Because they needed it to bring me and my sister to school. So I was so happy that with that money that they saved, they bought me my first piano. One day I bought them a car, I promise. So what happened is, is I went to my piano lessons and everything went so well, is that um, I also worked in my father's restaurant. My father had a Turkish restaurant, very fancy, in Amsterdam, and I was there a waitress. I loved my job. And there was also a piano in the restaurant. So some customers would then ask me, would you like to play piano? I said, no, I'm, I'm just a waitress. And the next day, they would ask me again, other customers, and I said, all right, I will start playing the piano. So what happened was is that, um, yeah, a lot of uh, uh, customers would come and visit the restaurant now, not only to eat the kebab, but also to listen to my music. I also went every year to, uh, every year to New York to study, also to teach, and to give concerts there. And I was starting to uh, also compose my own music. And when I came back to Amsterdam, a lot of people were wondering, who's this girl from this restaurant playing in New York? A lot of people came only to listen sometimes. So what we had to do is we had to give real concerts to just, you know, let the people come and then go and do the next one. And what also happened was um, a lot of uh, record uh, companies were trying to get a hold of me. Sony Music, Universal, they also said, who is this girl, this Turkish girl, playing jazz music, composing for orchestras, making classical music? Who is this girl? And by that time, I was saying, okay, Karsu, if you want to make, uh, if you want to do this professionally, you have to go to the conservatory. You have to uh, do it really good and, and learn everything. So I went to the conservatory and I was very nervous. I was 17 years old. And I was standing there, and um, all these Dutch people, and I'm this Turkish little girl, hi. <laughs> and I was singing, and they said no. And their no was su such a huge disappointment for me, because I was like, if these professional people are telling me no, that I, maybe I shouldn't do it. But by that time, I discovered that there was a huge platform of social media. So I, by that time, I made my own Instagram, Facebook, you all know it. And I've discovered, all right, so I have record labels wanting me, conservatory that doesn't want me. And I was wondering, do I really need them? So I started my own record label, and I signed my first artist, myself. And I was really proud, and everything was going very good. And also, by social media, I started to see Everything was getting bigger. My career was getting bigger. I was performing in festivals all around the world, giving my own concerts. And it was really, um, yeah, astonishing. Like, for example, I, used to, I, I played in Brazil, and I was like, okay, still a Turkish girl, Amsterdam, who is going to know me in Brazil? But all my concerts were also sold out there. So social media, for me, was such a huge platform, and it showed me that I, me, the artist myself, could be my own social media. I don't need a newspaper anymore to, uh, to announce my concerts. So everything was going great. I had huge designers that wanted to dress me. Uh, I am now the face of the new uh, uh, shampoo of Turkey for brown hair. Very happy about that. And uh, it was going very well. But at a certain point, I was like, okay, 
So my life is from hotel to hotel, country to country, concert to concert. Everything is great, sold out, people loving my music, listening to my albums. I was a, such a, f a fortunate artist. But was this it? One day, I went to the train station in Amsterdam, and I saw some children walking around alone, seven years old, eight years old. And I discovered that there was a, a huge problem in the world, all the refugees. My father has been a refugee. So when I started to notice there was a whole group of volunteers in the central station of Amsterdam picking up all the refugees that came from all around the world. I had the job to take care of the children. So I'm from Turkey, I, I don't speak uh, that much that good Turkish and I don't speak Arabic at all. So with hands and everything, I would talk to these kids. And some kids, for example, these two boys who are brothers came alone. Seven years old and eight years old. And I was there at the central station and it was getting so big. And one day, I remember, and I was there not as an artist at all. I didn't even say my name because I didn't want anyone to know who I was or what I did. But the, these kids and the look in their eyes made me think, what is going on? And what I needed at that moment was really simple things. I needed warm clothes. I needed, um, these kids wanted to have internet to contact their parents who were still in, uh, in Syria. And I needed food. But I knew that at that moment I was with these kids and I knew my friends were busy, my mom was busy, so what, what should I do to have some food? I didn't have any time because there were still children coming from platform five and two children from platform 10. So I said, wait a minute, I have a, a huge social media. So I said, maybe I can ask someone, one person that can bring me burek, I don't know if you know it, or sandwiches, anything. What happened in, in one and a half hours, I had so many of my fans bringing me food and drinks, clothes, because it was winter, it was so cold. And I thought to myself, oh my God, I'm a social media influencer now. <laughs> but it turned out so differently. And I thought, okay, I, I get so much fulfilling to, to, to help these kids. And I've achieved so much in life, and I'm so grateful at this age that I can do what I love and that I found my talent because my parents gave me every opportunity they could. So I imagine what if these kids are so talented in any job, even baking bread or something, I don't know. If any and every child in this world could learn his talent like we did, how amazing would the future be? So I said to myself with my friend Ala, who was also from Syria and who helped me around at the central station, is we should do more. So we opened our first school in, uh, in Greece for refugee children, and I'm very happy to pronounce Happy Caravan. Look it up, please, on social media. Happy Caravan is our school. And we have now 60 uh, of our students, and we're opening the second school in a, a couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And please let this amazing, warm, loving applause not only be for me, for, but for the amazing uh, volunteers as teachers that we have over there. And, and the children that I've met are so amazing. Um, I met a little girl uh, who um, doesn't know anything but war. She saw for five years long, she saw only bombs. But when she came to us, she learned English in seven months and she speaks it even better than I do. So I'm so proud. And on and on, um, as I... Um, keep on going with my career, I started to think, what if we influencers would give 1% or maybe half of our time and our, our posts maybe to something good? Like, this is, this is my passion. And maybe you have something else with animal, animals or with older people that are alone. I think that we all together would make this world, what is our future, a much, much better place. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and um, if I may, I have, um, I'm, I'm still a musician, uh, not a teacher, but uh, I, I would like to play uh, two of, of uh, my songs. And um, thank you. <laughs>
sana girme So um, I've been to New York many times and also when I was uh, 17 years old and uh, I was too young to go to jazz clubs and, um, but I still went sneaky inside with my friends who are from New Orleans and I learned jazz over there and fell in love with the blues as well and one day I was sitting in the Blue Note Jazz Club and my friends were sitting and they were saying, Carso, I was like, yeah, what you play is a blues. I was like, a blues? No, I'm a girl from Turkey, I don't do blues. They said, yeah, we know you can do it. And I said, okay, I'll try something. So I went um, uh, by, the, by the black piano and I sat down. And I was like, oh my God, I'm 17 and these guys are so good. And then I said, okay, Carson, focus, you can do this. And I played something and I remembered it. So I'm gonna play it here for you this afternoon. I'm such, it's for me a really big honor to play for you, uh, for, for everyone here. But I want to also to, because um, it's the, almost the end of the thing, so. <sighs> so if you want to um, contribute, you can. So if you really uh, like it or you're feeling yourself, you can say, yeah. Let's practice. Yeah, wait, let's practice. One, two, three. Light is all brown 
in this dark I give you my last the fire the fire My Turkish delight And I'll make you boil until you're gone And I'll bury your soul Deep inside my heart Touch me Touch me Jealousy to the side. Break it down, break it down, break it down to the floor. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up until, until. Thank you so much.